Hello guys, so we are going to discuss today what activity base costing. In short, it is also called what ABC. Actually, activity base costing is the you can say refined version of job order costing, or you can also say this way. Activity based costing is the refined version of absorption costing because in job order costing we also apply absorption costing. Understood? So how ABC costing will work? So I want to first compare two costing methods because if I will compare two costing methods, one is traditional costing method and second is what? ABC costing. Traditional mean to say I'm talking about absorption costing. So first, I will quickly perform a, a small example with you, like how you deal under absorption costing. And then we will see what are the changes under activity-based costing. And at the end, we will go through theoretical area. And then we will do the practice question. So without wasting any time, so let's move to the first traditional costing system. Traditional costing means I'm talking about simply absorption costing. Okay. It is also called what? Volume based costing. So as I told you, theoretical area we will go through at the end. So automatically, if you know the calculation, so same thing will be written in the theoretical portion. So here we go. Let's do the example first. We have a small example to practice. Let's assume there's an Atlas company produces two automobile anti-theft devices. We are manufacturing two products. The first product is called the boot and the second product is called the club. Okay. The boot is a high volume item. High volume item means say its production is more. A sale is more. Okay. The boot is a high volume item with sales totaling how much? 25,000 per year. This 25,000. This 25,000 actually, these are the number of units. Okay. Then a club is a low volume product. Low volume means say its production is less or sale is less. And here uh, with the sales totaling how much? 5,000 per year. Then each product, each means the boot and club both. Each product requires one hour of direct labor. And then we have another information, total annual direct labor hours. How much is required? Obviously, if you have a two products, one is the boot and second is the club. For boot, how many units we are producing? 25,000 units. And for club, how many units we are producing? 5,000 units, understood, per year. So how many hours are required for the labor? How many hours are required? One hour of direct labor. It means if I will multiply with one hour, it means 25,000 units will take how many hours? 25,000 hours. And 5,000 hours, uh, 5,000 units, obviously these units will also take one hour. We will multiply with the one hour, which is time per uh, unit. So it, it requires how many hours? 5,000 hours. So total hours, how much is required to produce both product? 30,000 labor hours which is given here understood then what we have here we have a direct labor cost which is 12 dollar per unit for each product this is the labor cost which cost it is labor cost like it's a labor rate for each hour simply 12 dollar then we have a expected annual manufacturing overhead cost Overhead cost, you know, by definition, these are those costs other than direct material and direct labor. So those are called overhead cost. So overhead cost is how much total is given? $900,000. Then we have a direct material is available here. So we have a direct material cost, which is $40 per unit for the boot and $30 per unit for the club. So what we are going to do, we have to calculate the cost per unit cost per unit under which costing under traditional costing traditional means absorption costing 
So obviously our topic is not absorption. Our topic is ABC. But if I will do this example first, you will see how we calculate the cost under traditional costing. Then you can see easily the difference how you will calculate the cost under ABC costing. So this information is available, guys. Please remember whenever you want to calculate cost per unit under absorption costing. Under which costing? Absorption or traditional, which is also called volume-based costing. So we will always we will always include three things into the cost of the product. Which three things we will always take cost of direct material. Plus, we will take here cost of direct labor and then we will add here what? Overheads. Please also note, when you apply absorption costing, you are not required to make any difference between variable overhead and fixed overhead. You can plug these two overheads, variable and fixed together, and you can charge as a single amount. Understood? So this that's why I wrote only overheads. I didn't write here variable overhead and fixed overhead. I wrote it here overheads. Overheads means say it will include automatically both overheads, variable and fixed. If I will add these three things, so this is known as cost per unit. Under which costing? Traditional costing. Understood? So we have read already read the question. So please let's have a look. So we have a two products which we are manufacturing. One product is name is on, what is the name? The boot. It's given in the question. And second product name is what is the club? It is also given in the question. So first cost which we have to write? Direct material. And direct material cost is given in the question. For the boot, they told you direct material cost is how much? $40. And for the club, they told you direct material cost is how much? $30. It is given in the question. We read the question. Then we will add here what? We will add their labor cost as per the format. And for labor cost, what data is given? He told you in the question, either you are manufacturing boot or you will manufacture club, the product club. So you need only one hours for each unit for the boot and for the club. And in the question, it is also given. What is given? The rate per hour is also given. It means if I want to calculate the cost of labor for the boot, each unit requires how many hours? One hour and what is the rate per hour? Twelve dollar. It means labor cost will be what? Twelve dollar. And then what we have a club. Club also each unit requires one labor hours and each hour cost is twelve twelve dollar, which is given in the question. So it means labor cost is also twelve twelve. Understood? Then what we will do? We will add here, guys, overheads, and this is the most important thing because in ABC costing, overhead is going to change. The way which we will use here under absorption and costing, this way we will not use under ABC costing. There we have a different way to allocate the overheads. Understood? So how you will allocate first overheads by using traditional costing. Traditional costing is also called which costing? Absorption or you can also use the word job order costing. So this is how you will do guys. Please, here we go. This is the step number one. We discussed already when I taught you absorption costing, but it's a quick repetition. So what we will do, step number one, we have to calculate. What we have to calculate? We have to calculate overhead recovery rate. This overhead recovery rate is also called overhead absorption rate. Okay. This is also called overhead applied rate. And when you calculate this rate, I need your concentration, please. With the same sheet, I will share within your group so you can download from there. So this rate, when we calculate this rate, this rate we always calculate at the start of the year. When? At the start of the year. Okay, and this rate is always based on your budgeted information. And what is the formula to get over a recovery rate, which you will calculate at the start of the year? This formula you will always follow. You will take as a numerator total estimated annual overheads. Total estimated means a budgeted annual overheads because you are going to make budget i mean so you are going to uh, budget or uh, estimate the overhead which you will incur in coming year and you will divide where what you will divide you will divide the total estimated annual activity level the numerator is total cost of overhead denominator is the annual activity 
activity levels. I'll explain what it is. So let me tell you here what is total annual estimated overhead. So now whatever I'm going to speak, it is really, really important. If you will look at the question, we told you expected annual manufacturing overhead cost is how much? How much it is? $900,000. Please listen to me what I'm saying now. Guys, if in your question, he told you breakup of the overhead. Breakup means say he told you we have electricity this much, we have a rent this much, taxation this much, insurance this much. For absorption costing, we do not need any breakup. We only need total overheads. If breakup is given, you, we will make the total first. So total, I'm assuming it directly is given how much it is? $900,000. This is your numerator of the formula, which I will write it here as estimated overhead, $900,000. Understood? But in ABC costing once I will teach you, I will tell you there we need a breakup of overhead. We don't need total. But in absorption costing, what's first difference you, you came to understand? We need total. Even breakup is given, we will make it total. Then you will divide in what estimated activity level. What is activity level? Don't uh, worry with this word. Activity level means say the base which you are going to use to allocate the overheads. And there are probably three bases are there for activity level which we can use. It could be labor hours. It could be machine hours. It could be output. Mostly in your exam question, he will tell you uh, you have to use labor hours to allocate the overhead. Or you have to use machine hours to allocate the overhead, or you have to use output. But in your practical scenario, you have to decide by yourself. How you will decide if your work is labor? What I was telling you guys, I was telling you. I'm sorry because it was interrupted. I was telling you. There are three activity levels. So here recording stopped, right, previously. So we have a three activity level. We can use either labor hours, either machine hours, either what? Output. Okay, in exam question, it will tell you which base you have to use. Labor hours or machine hours or output. But practice. Sorry for interruption again, guys. So in exam, we will tell you the base which we are going to use to allocate the overheads. Understood? Uh, now here guys, for example, allocation base, how you will calculate, please remember here. So I'm going to use allocation base as what? Labor hours. And also note what I'm saying now. Labor hours we calculated here, right? For boot, how many units we are producing? 25,000. Each unit requires how many hours? One hour, it is 25,000. Per club, how many units you are producing? 5,000. Each unit takes how many hours? One hour, it requires what? 5,000. So I will make the total of these two. Total of these two. Understood? And total is how much is? 30,000 hours. So these 30,000 hours, I will divide it here. So my overhead cost was 900,000. And my labor hours are how much? 30,000, so I will get per hour rate, which is how much? Dollar 30 per hour. Now I want to allocate this per hour overhead cost. This is actually overhead cost per hour, per labor hour. So now I want to allocate this to the product. Tell me, tell me per hour cost is $30 per hour. And I want to calculate for the boot. Tell me how many boot is taking hours to complete it for one unit. But one unit boot is taking how many hours? One hour. It means overhead cost will be how much? Only $30. Same if I want to calculate for the club. What I will take, I will take this overhead recovery rate, which is $30 per hour. And I will multiply with labor hours, which club is utilizing. The club is also utilizing how many hours by chance in the question? One hour. But practically it could be different, right or wrong? Even in question it could be different. But as per data in my example, boot and club both are taking one hour. So that's why we are multiplying with the one one. So it means overhead cost, which we will take to the boot and club, that will also be the 30, 30 dollars. So this is what we will write it here. 30 dollar, 30 dollar. 
Now you can calculate the unit cost. Unit cost for each product. Material cost is 40 per boot. Labor cost is what? 12. And overhead cost is what? 30. So total it will become what? 82. And for the club also, material cost is how much? 30. Boot is how much? 12. And club is how much? 30. So total product cost, uh, unit cost is how much? 72. I hope so. Because although we studied absorption costing, but I gave you a quick refresher how you do in the absorption costing. But our topic, our topic is what? Activity based costing. Now I'm moving to that side and I need your concentration and see what the differences are there. And then I'll speak about critical aspects and then I will do practice questions with you. Okay, so now we are moving to ABC costing. Now we are talking about activity based costing. So now I will ask also the question from you guys. Okay. What I explained. So listen me carefully. So an activity based costing first, let's see what's the difference in calculation. Guys, please remember here in activity based costing, direct material cost, which cost direct material and direct labor cost will be the same whatever you have written under traditional costing the same you will write under what abc costing there is no difference in that only what will change only the change is going to be in overheads allocation where overheads allocation in abc costing activity based costing we will use different way to allocate the overhead Understood? So let's have a look at the format. So if this is the format is in front of you. So obviously here again, we will write those three costs, direct material, direct labor, and overhead cost. Direct material, direct labor, it will be the same as you have written in traditional costing. But what is going to be different? Overhead. So this format you will follow now. This format you will follow, you will write it here, direct material cost, which you will write as a same as you have written in traditional. You will write labor cost. You will write same which you have written in traditional costing. And you will write your overheads. That is going to be changed. So again, if I will add all these three costs, material, labor, and overhead. So this is going to be your cost per unit under ABC costing. Okay, now here. Now here. What are what are the processes or what are the procedure which we will use to allocate the overheads? Just I need your focus on screen. All these things are written in the sheet. You will just get it there and read it from there. Everything is done. Just focus on screen. Now, what steps are there under activity-based costing? Please focus. Number one here. So when you when you want to allocate the overhead, because these things I'm explaining for what only overheads. What are going to be changed now? Number one, step number one is what? We have to identify and classify the major activities for overheads. We have to identify or classify major activities for overhead. Practically, you need to do this. But in exam, activities will be given. What will be given? In exam, what will be given? Activities. Activities will be given. What's the step number one? In overhead allocation for ABC costing, costing, we have to identify and classify the major activities. I know you are maybe thinking what major activities. I will tell you first, I will give you a couple of examples. Then I will tell you in exam, it will be given. For example, during manufacturing, Maybe you do different activities, different work, right? For overheads, for example, maybe you are ordering material. Ordering is, ordering cost is itself activity, right or wrong? Ordering, you are ordering this itself activity. Maybe then you are moving material. Maybe then you are moving material. 
from warehouse to the production it's another activity understood maybe you are maintaining the machinery machine maintenance right or wrong this is another activity which you perform so activities means say whatever we do in overheads to manufacture the product that is called what your activities so what do you have to do you have to identify those activities from the question and it will be straight away given to you it will be what given for example we will tell you we have ordering cost we have a dispatching cost we have a, a material handling cost okay we have a inspection cost we have a setup cost all these are called activities in exam it will be given just you need to identify then what you will do after it is written and allocate the manufacturing overhead cost to appropriate cost pool for example obviously ordering cost in accounting also obviously salary you will record in salary ledger or in inventory ledger salary ledger so same here ordering cost whenever you will have ordering cost it will be recorded in ordering ledger understood and whatever material handling cost is there you will record under material handling ledger whatever maintenance cost is there you will record in maintenance ledger it means where we record the cost actually that is called what pool so they are saying what they are saying identify activities and allocate the cost to those activities this you don't need to do them in the exam question it will be given how he will tell you your ordering cost is 50000 it means it's already pooled allocated for example material moving cost is 60000 it means it is already there okay and maintenance cost maintenance cost is for example 50000 again it means you you have to just look from the question what activities are there these are called activities and what is their cost cost is also given understood what activities are there what cost is there? this is the step number 1 which will be straight away given in the question step number 2 is what what they are saying you have to identify you have to identify what the cost driver for each activity now what is cost driver cost driver mean to say first i'm telling you simple definition then i will quote the example cost driver means say these are those factors which will drive the cost for example if you will increase the fact cost driver cost will increase if you will decrease the cost driver cost will decrease now i will give you examples tell me ordering cost for ordering cost what could be the cost driver maybe it could be the number of orders right or wrong if you will place orders many time ordering cost will increase if you will place order less times ordering cost will decrease it means for ordering cost what is the cost driver number of order same here maybe for maintenance cost for maintenance cost cost like when you have uh, maintenance the cost driver could be machine hours obviously if you will operate machine hours more more hours machine for more hours so obviously maintenance cost will increase right if you will operate machine for less hours maintenance cost will decrease as you means like your car car and you drive more more maintenance cost drive less less maintenance cost it means for car maintenance cost what is the cost driver kilometers mileage you could have a setup as activity setup cost and you know engine we need engineers to change the setup of machine maybe previously you were manufacturing marker now you want to manufacture pencils by using same machine so you need to change certain dies so this is setup cost for example setup cost is 10000 for setup cost what could be cost driver number of setups what it could be number of setup another examples from your common life just give examples you are manufacturing chairs chairs need material chairs need what material so what will be the cost driver for material cost think practically number of chairs right if you will produce more chairs you need more material material cost will be uh, will increase if you produce less chairs real cost will decrease another example for example you are paying cost to the labor let's assume it's indirect labor which is the part of uh, overheads so we have indirect labor cost which is activity for example and cost is 10 5000 what is the cost of indirect labor indirect labor means the salaries of sweeper cleaners janitorial staff who are in the production so what will the cost driver maybe labor hours labor hours maybe if they will work more hours you have to pay more understood normally i am assuming here labor is paid based on hourly basis not on fixed salary 
You understood what is the cost driver? Cost driver means the factor which causes the cost to occur. If that factor will increase, cost will increase. I gave you a number of examples. Again, in exam, what you have to do? You don't need to do anything. Just you need to look at the cost driver which will be given in the question. Like this cost driver belongs to what? For example, number of setup. Number of setups are available. Tell me from this list. Number of setups is for machine maintenance or for setup cost or for ordering cost. It's for setup cost. If you have a number of orders, it is for what? Ordering cost. If you have for a moving material, maybe it could be a number of moves as a given in the question. Number of moves could be cost driver for that. It means from step number one and step number two, you don't need to do anything. This information will also be given first step. Activities with the cost and cost driver will also be given in the question. Okay, so you don't need to do anything. So then we have a step number three, which you need to do now. What we will do, we will cal calculate the overhead rate for each pool. Each pool means say each activity. Please remember I told you previously, in absorption costing, we need total overheads. We need total. But in ABC costing, we need breakup. And what we are going to calculate, we need overhead recovery rate for every activity separately. For example, if I want to calculate recovery rate, let's assume I want to calculate recovery rate for ordering cost. Ordering cost. What I will do? Overhead recovery rate per order I want to calculate. This is called recovery rate. I'll take ordering cost as a numerator. And the denominator I will divide with the number of orders. So this will give you per order cost, right or wrong? Then if I want to calculate, for example, for setup cost, I, I need overhead recovery rate per setup. Recovery rate means per setup, per order, per hour, like that. Okay, so I'll take setup cost, setup cost as a numerator, and I will divide with what? With the number of with the number of setups. I'll get per setup cost. Once this is done, I'll show you with the example. So once it is done, so this step you need to do. First two steps will be given. This step I need to do. Then what I will do after that, I will assign overheads. I will assign overheads cost for, for each cost to the product using that overhead rates which I have calculated in step number three. And how you will do it, how you will assign the overhead cost to the product. This I'm going to show you with the help of example. I'll do all four steps with the help of examples. And if you understand the examples, it will be very easy for you. Then second thing is left theoretical area and practice question. That we will also do. So here we have example now, guys. I hope so you are understanding. So we have again same question, but here we have a different with some extra information. And now I will ask you the question as well. Atlas company again produces how many products? Two automobile anti-theft devices. The one product name is what is the boot? Boot is high volume product, means more production is required. And we are producing how many units per year? 25,000 units per year. These are the only units. Then we have here what? Second product, we have a club. Club is low volume, low volume is low production. And here, what is how many units are there? 5,000 units are there for the club. Now, each product requires, each product, means both boot and club, requires one hour of direct labor. Product name. It's just the name of the product. It's also boot. Boot and club, it's just the name of the product. You don't need to bother with the names. They can give name X, Y, ABC, Boot club, whatever product name, just it's a name, nothing else. So each product requires what? One hour of one hour of direct labor. Each product requires one hour of direct labor. Even like for example, if you are manufacturing boot, one hour is required for one unit. If you are manufacturing club, so one hour is required. Understood? Then we have here what? Total annual direct labor hours. Obviously. For boot, as I told you, how many units are required? 25,000 given here, right? If each unit takes how many hours? One hour, so total hours are required, how much? 25, which is given here. For the club, how many units we are producing? 
5,000. If each unit takes how many hours? One hours, it requires how many hours? 5,000 hours. So this is what is given here. Then we have a direct labor cost, how much? Dollar 12 per unit. Per unit or per hour, I can say, right? Because each unit requires how many hours? One. Each also requires one hour. So one hour labor cost or per unit cost, it's the same. Then what we have here, we have here expected annual manufacturing overhead. What we have? Expected annual manufacturing overhead. Overhead cost is how much? 900,000. Can you tell me now, can I use this overhead in ABC costing? Can I use this? Why not? Because we need breakup, not the total. It means this question is not complete. We need further information to do the question. Okay, but total is given here, but we need breakup. Then you told you a direct material. Material cost for each product. For the boot, material cost is how much? $40 per unit. And for the club, material cost is how much? $30. We cannot apply ABC costing because remember the steps. Okay, material cost is available, great. Labor cost is available, great. So, but we need overheads. And for overheads, I need name of activity. I need cost of the activity and I need cost driver also. Understood? Then I can work with it. So that is why question continues. So here we have it for the internet. Now what we have here, overhead costs are assigned directly to the appropriate activity cost pool. What he told you, he told you name of activity and here he told you overhead cost for that activity. Understood? First activity is what? Setting up machines. How much is the cost? 300,000. Machining, it's like a machine maintenance, you can say how much it is? 500,000. Inspection, how much it is? 100,000. So total overhead is how much? And this total 900,000 was given here actually. And now breakup is given down. Understood? Can you tell me, just tell me, can, if I read this information till here, okay, can I apply ABC costing till here? Still no. Because activity is given, cost is given, step number one is given. Step number two was what? Cost, driver. Driver that I also need. So that is where question continues. More detail now. How many overheads we have, guys? Three. It's given here, setting a machine. What was their cost? 300,000 cost is given here. So, but what is given here now? Second column is for cost driver. Tell me for setting a machine, machines. What is the cost driver? Number of setups. Please listen what I'm saying now. Number of setup is the cost driver. How many setups total we have? 1,500 because it told you expected use of cost drivers per activity. But total setups are 1,500. But how much setup is required for the boot? 500. And how many setups are required for the club? 1,000. It means 500 plus 1,000 is equal to what? 1,500. In your exam, please remember. In your exam, what he will do? Maybe this column will not be given this column, but he will give you this information. So total you have to make by yourself now. So total setups are how much? 1,500. Then he told you second overhead cost, which is which cost? Machining cost. What's the cost driver for that? Number of machine hours. And number of machine hours, he told you 30,000 for what? Boot and 20,000 for what? Club. So I'll make total. But in, in this example, total is given. But in mostly in exam question, total will not be given. You have to make total or total machine hours how much. Then third, what we have? Inspection cost. Inspection cost, what is the cost driver for inspection? Number of inspections. And number of inspections, 500 inspections are required for boot. And for club, how many inspections are required? 1,200. So it means total inspections are how much? 2,000 inspections. So these are machine hours and these are the setups. Understood? Now question information is complete and now we can solve the question by using what? 
ABC cos thing. So how you will do it? Solution is here. Very first thing, you will write the name of product. We have a boot and you have a club. First cost, what we will write? Direct material. Whatever you have written in traditional costing, same you can write it here. And material cost is given in the question, if you remember. $40 per unit per boot, $30 per unit for the club. Labor cost is also given. We told you each product takes how many hours? One hour. For the boot, one hour is for the club. And labor cost per hour is how much? $12, $12. So one hour times 12, it will give you 12 and 12. So it is same as we have written under traditional costing. Now what is going to change? Overheads. Would you recall the steps of overheads? Would you recall the steps of overheads? What were the steps of overhead? Number one, identify the activity. Right? Number one was what? Identify the activity. I'm repeating again and again because you should understand. Activity is given here. Three activities. It's given here also same. Number two, I need cost of activity which is also given here. Number three, I need what? Cost driver. Cost drivers, totals I need first. Understood? It means step activity is there, cost is there, step one is there, cost driver is there, step two is there. Now step three we have to do. What is step number three? Step number three was we have to calculate overhead recovery rate for each activity. For what? How many activities are there? Three. Number one, first activity is what? First activity is what? Setting up machine, right? Number one is setting up. Number two, machining. Number three, inspection. So I'll, I'll not move back here. I'm just writing here now. Understanding? So what I'll do, so we are calculating overhead recovery rate for each activity. For each activity. So we have three activities. Number first activity is what? Setting up, right? Set up cost. Setting up cost. For that, I need overhead recovery rate per setup. And what is the formula I will apply? I take the cost of setup. Cost of setup is given here. How much it is? 300,000 divided by total cost driver. Total you will divide here first. Even you want to calculate only the cost for the boot or even only for the club. But first initially you will divide total. Total how many setups are there? 1,500 setups. So once you will, once you will do it, so once you will do it, you will get per setup cost, right? Why per setup? Will you divide it with the total setup? So it will give you cost for one setup. So that is the recovery rate. How, how much is the cost? 200. Then you will calculate same recovery rate for second cost. Second cost was machining cost. Again, I need an overhead recovery rate per machine hours. Why? Because machine hours, machine are the cost driver. Understood? So I'll take care of what machining cost is how much? It's given here. How much? 500,000. I'll take machining cost, which is $500,000. Divided by total machine hours. Total machine hours, how much? 50, because 30 plus 20, 50,000. 50,000 machine hours. I'll get another rate which will be ten dollar per machine hour. I can write it here. Dollar ten per machine hour. Understood? And again, I'll do for the third activity also. What was the third activity? Inspection. So I'm calculating now for inspections. Third activity inspection. So it is inspection, and I need overhead. Recovery rate per inspection because total inspections, inspections are number of inspections are the cost driver. So it will give you per inspection cost. So I'll take inspection cost, which is how much? It's given here. How much? $100,000. Total inspections are how much? 2,000 inspections. So this will give you per inspection cost. How much it is? 50 per inspection. $50 per inspection. And by, by the by the way, guys, third step is done. Easy, right? Right or wrong? So now what you will do, this third step solution is also available here in the sheet. Uh, here. 
It's calculated for machine setup. Per setup cost is how much? Two to two hundred dollar per setup. Second, it was machining cost per set per machine hour cost is ten dollar. Third is what inspection cost overall recovery rate is how much? Fifty dollar per inspection. I need your concentration. It's literally important now because this way you have to follow. If you will change your ways, you will be stuck. Then what you will do, guys? Step number four, you have to do. What was the step number four? Step number four, it was we have to allocate. Allocate means we have to assign. We have to assign the cost of overhead to each product. How you will assign? You will follow this format. First, we will write it as the product name. Boot and the club. So we will write it here first, which cost I want to assign? Machine setup. And you know, machine setup, please remember, what was the per setup cost? Per setup cost we are calculated in step number two. It was how much? Step number three, sorry. It was 200. Now you have to look from this question. How many setups? How many setups? Boot is consuming. Boot is consuming how many setups? 500. And club is consuming how many setup? 1000. And what is per setup cost? 200. What I will do? I'll take 200, which is per setup cost, multiply by number of setups of what? Boot. This will give you overhead cost for the boot in total, right? Understanding? Then for the club, what I will do? What was the per setup cost? 200 multiplied by $1,000. This will give you overhead cost for the Club. So this is what is done here. So we'll apply this formula. We'll write overhead recovery rate per setup, multiply the number of setups. What was the per recovery setup? 200. And how many setups are required for the boot? 500. So this cost will go to boot. For the club, again, per setup cost was 200. And for club, how many setups are required? 1000. So this cost will go to the club. So what was the total setup cost? It was 300,000, which is breaking down 100,000 here, 200,000 here. Understood? Then you have to do for what? You have to do for, same you have to do for machining cost. Do you remember? Again, you will apply this formula because machining cost is based on machine hours. So we will take overhead recovery rate per hour, multiply by number of Machine hours. Over a recovery rate per hour, you have calculated in step number three, it was $10. $10. But boot is taking how many machine hours? 30,000 is given in the question. Do you want me to show? I'll show you. Machine hours, it was here 30,000. 30,000 machine hours, 20,000. I'll multiply by 10 and multiply by 10. It will give you cost for the Boot and club. Understood? So this is what I have done here. So we'll take 10 multiplied by 30,000 for the boot, it will give you 300,000. And 10 multiplied by 200,000 for machine, it will give you 200,000. Total was you, do you remember what was the total? 500,000 is the breakup. 300,000 is allocated to the boot, 200,000 is allocated to the club. Understood? Same you have to do with the third. What was the third? Inspection cost. Do you remember we have overhead recovery rate per inspection? We calculated in step number three. The recovery rate per inspection was how much? $50. In step three, we calculated. So now I will apply this formula. Overhead recovery rate per inspection multiplied by number of inspections. Obviously, if I want to write under boot, I have to take inspections for the boot. Later on, if I want to write for the club, I have to multiply with the number of inspections for the club. Again, it's given in the question in the top. So what is per inspection rate? 50. And how many inspections are required for the boot? 500. It will go to the boot. Again, per inspection rate was 50. And 1,000 inspections are required. 1,500 inspections are required for the club. It means 75,000 will go to the club. So you know, total inspection cost was how much? 100,000 This is the breakup. 25 is charged to boot. And 75 is charged to the club. So what I will do now? Now I'll make the overhead total product-wise. 
over a total product wise. So what is the total here? Look at here. So this is I hope you can view. This is over a total. 100,000 for machining cost, 300,000 plus 25,000. Total is how much? 425. Total overhead is allocated to which product? Food. How much allocated to the club? 200,000 plus 200,000 plus 75. How much it is? Do you remember what was total overheads? Total overhead was 900,000. This is how it is supplied. 425, 725. Understood? Okay. Then what you will do here, guys? We made the total overheads. Then what you will do? You will divide this total overhead. With what? With the number of units because I want per unit cost, right? I want overhead per unit. But do you remember in the question it is given? For boot, we are producing how many units? 25,000 units. It's given in the question. And for club, how many units we are producing? 5,000 units. If you will divide 425 divided by 25, it will give you 17 per unit. If you will take 475 divided by 5,000, it will give you how much? 95 per unit. Now, this is the overhead cost. Understood? What is the overhead cost per boot? 17. Per club? 95. So, this I will take to the product cost here. 17 and 95. Understood? Now, tell me what is unit cost including material labor and overhead for the boot? It will be 40 plus 12 plus 17. It is 69. 30 plus 12 plus 90, it is how much? 137. So what do you learn from ABC costing? For each activity, you have to calculate separate recovery rate. Once recovery rate is calculated, and then allocate the overheads first in total to each product and then convert into per unit. This is the easiest way. If you will try to do directly per unit calculations, you will make mistake, I'm telling you. Understood? Now, I hope so it's clear. Okay, now guys, <clears throat> now I'm going to make some comparison and I'm going to explain some critical areas. And then I'll do the question with you. First, tell me in simple words. Here, if I, I will compare it now here, I'm going to compare some points here. Is there any change? I'm asking questions. Is there any change in material cost and labor cost under traditional costing? And ABC costing? No. Same thing we will write. Material cost, same we will write under traditional, same we will write under ABC. Labor cost, same we will write under traditional, same we will write under ABC. Second question, is there any change in overhead allocation? Yes. In traditional costing, we need total overheads, we don't need breakup. Even breakup is given, we will make the total. And we will select one activity level, either labor, labor either machine or either Output and based on that, we will allocate. But under ABC costing, no. We have to calculate recovery rate, not one. We have to calculate recovery rate separately for each activity level by using its own cost driver. And then we will allocate. Now tell me, if I will ask you the question, now this is, assume this is exam question, which costing methods requires more detail of records? ABC or traditional ABC. ABC because for each activity we need separate ledgers. There we need only one ledger per overhead. Okay. Now guys, you will see other practical points. If you remember, if you remember, we have two products, boot and club. We allocated overhead under which costing? Traditional costing, traditional, it was $30 per unit, $30 per unit. But when we used which costing? ABC costing, overhead was what? 17 and 95, hell of the difference, right? Now, first point which you have to keep in your mind as a practical. For boot, do you remember how many yearly demand was there? 25,000 units. And we said it is high volume product, right? For the club, how many demand was there? 5,000 units. And we said it is low volume product. 
under traditional costing, regardless the product is high volume or low volume. So overhead cost was what? Same. Understood? Regardless the product is high volume or low volume, under traditional costing, overhead cost was same $30, $30. But under ABC costing, overhead cost is 17 for a high volume product because boot is high volume and 95 is for what? Low volume product. Why? Now think why. Maybe the low volume, for example, on one side, you are manufacturing chairs. On other side, you are manufacturing jet fighters. Tell me. Chase will be high volume product. You can produce more units. But jet fighters will be low volume. It takes time to produce. Understood? Now why overhead cost will be higher for jet fighter which is low volume? Think why? Because that is complicated to manufacture. That will consume more activities. If that jet fighter is consuming more activities, it means more cost should be there for the overheads. And if chairs are consuming less activities, Less cost should be there for the overheads. In ABC costing, please remember this point. This will happen. Sometime, sometime low volume product will consume more overheads amount. And high volume product will consume less amount of overheads. This is what is written here. What is the logic for that? Sometime low volume product might be more complicated more complex to manufacture and high volume product could be less complete complicated less complex to manufacture obviously in costing what we do we have a very simple theory now i'm telling another point we have a very simple theory in abc costing in abc costing we don't allocate the cost blindly no what we do we use this rational what's the rational the product which will use more activity the product which will consume more activities, that product should have more overhead cost. And the product which will consume less activities, that product should have less overhead cost. It is based on consumption. Any product which will consume more activities, more cost of overheads. Less activities, less cost of overheads. Not like traditional costing, equally you are dividing. Understood? This is another point I told you. You actually are not getting idea these points are too much important actually. It's written theoretically. Then what is the other difference? Tell me the difference. Other difference I told you. In traditional costing we need what? Total overheads. Traditional costing. We need only one base. Machine hours, labor hours, output as one base. And we'll allocate. And in EBC costing, we need for each activity separate overhead recovery rate. Now tell me. So here we have some advantage and disadvantages. What is the benefit of ABC? Remember these points. ABC costing, uh, they are saying it's more accurate product costing. Why it's more accurate? Because we follow this philosophy. Which, which product is consuming more activities? Oh, jet fighters, okay, allocate more overheads. Which is consuming less? For example, chairs, okay, allocate less. So there is a logic to allocate the overheads. Understood? So they are saying that's why ABC costing will give you more accurate cost. Then what? than traditional cost. Number two, enhance control. Sorry, first point, what use of more cost pools? Obviously, I told you we are using breakup, more activity, more cost, more cost drivers that we allocate. Second advantage is what? Enhance control over what? Overhead cost. Okay, I'm giving you first example. How ABC costing will increase your control, okay? To control the cost, how? For example, if I want to calculate ordering cost, I know what is the reason for ordering cost, number of orders. It's a reason for ordering cost, right? Cost driver for ordering cost. Simply if I will cut down cost driver, my ordering cost will go down automatically. For example, my labor cost is more. Assume, assume just give me some. And I'm paying hourly basis to the labor. And I want to cut the labor cost. What I should do? I should cut the hours. Labor cost will come down, right or wrong? So in ABC costing, if you want to control any cost, just control the cost driver. For example, you do you want to reduce your fuel cost of your car? What you should do? 
we should drive more or less we should drive less we should cut the mileage we will cut the mileage automatically fuel cost will go down so that is why abc costing gives you better understanding to control the cost understood how you can control the cost by controlling the cost drive that's the fundamental thing next word better management decision why better management because abc costing gives you better cost if cost is accurate more accurate more accurate obviously your pricing decision will also be more accurate right possibly we don't know the exact cost of your product right maybe you will think oh i'm in the profit actually you might be in the loss also so that is why whenever you set any price you need first what cost there you add what you add the profit this will give you what sale price so cost if it is incorrect if it is incorrect pricing decision will also be incorrect also understood so abc costing gives you what better cost now just try to think there are some other points i will add now try to think what are the drawbacks of abc costing limitation can you see what is the first limitation can be expensive to use how it is expensive you need specialized software for abc costing where you can create more ledgers for the overheads in which you can also keep the records of the cost drivers so that's why it's expensive not the easiest one normally companies follow the option costing okay because it it requires some specific tools that's why it's expensive plus some arbitrary allocation continue what it means arbitrary allocation sometimes guys we are human we are not able to identify the direct cost driver for activity for example let electricity cost what should be cost driver there are different reasons right maybe i can use machine hours because machines are consuming right or wrong maybe i can use labor hours because labor is also utilizing lights so what is the big best now in this scenario and this would sometimes we we get confused also in those scenario if you are not sure what exactly should be the cost driver still we can use labor hours as cost driver or what machine hours as, as a cost driver or output it means still that option is available that's why they saying some arbitrary allocation continued because sometimes it's not possible for us to identify the exact cost driver for each activity till then we are dependent upon same labor hours same machine hours and same output understood now i want to tell you last two points and then i'll take you to the question and those points you will also understand with the question also it has calculation please calculation i will explain with the question don't worry so let me tell you here there are two words i want to tell you these two words one is called what this is a very famous term peanut butter costing don't think peanut plus butter is something good here it's not good peanut butter costing okay is a one word that is called what cross subsidization what it is let let me tell you it it's linked peanut peanut butter costing is what when you peanut butter costing means say when you inaccurately allocate the cost of overheads to the product that is called what peanut like when calculations are not correct that's we say what peanut butter costing and what is cross subsidization obviously when you will miss cost one product it will also miss cost the other product it will have cross subsidization effect also but in calculation how you will do it i will show you don't worry just remember two words what is peanut butter costing in accurate allocation of overheads and what is cross subsidization miss costing of one product will miss cost the other product also obviously if you will allocate wrong cost to one product so you will also it will affect the cost of the other product also understood because maybe some cost of other product you have shared to the first product so it will miss cost but how you will do in the calculations i'm going to tell you now directly with the question 
peanut butter cost in your cross subsidization effects, how you will calculate. Let me give you a small example first here. This is actually the cross subsidization effect I'm going to explain now. For example, if I have an overhead, if I have a overhead cost, for example, $10,000. And I have a two different base to allocate the overheads. I have two different base. For example, I can allocate based on what? Machine or and I can allocate based on what output. Here I will get different answer. Here I will get what? Different answers for overhead allocation. Understood the difference of these two because when you use two different bases to allocate the overhead, the overhead cost is changing. The difference between these two choices now is called what? Cross subsidization, miscasting. Understood? So it means whenever you will calculate Whenever you will calculate cross subsidization effects in exam, he will always give you two bases to allocate. So first you have to allocate the overhead cost by using one base. Then you have to allocate the overhead cost by using another base. And then see the difference. That will be the cross subsidization or peanut butter cost. Understood? Now maybe you're thinking how to do it. Don't worry. I'm going to show you question. Okay, so here we go. Questions are not easy, guys, because it's a professional exam. It's not a, you know, university exam. Please, you have to listen. So I'll show you some technical questions. Yeah, so here we have a question. I hope so you will read this question first, guys. Read it. Just do it. Read this question, guys. It is on your screen. I hope so, guys. You have read the question. So let me read it for you, guys. There's a factory makes two products. One product is called X. The second product is called Z. X is being introduced this period. And Z has been in production for two years. These are just stories. Important thing is name a product. For the period about to begin, 1,000 units of each product to be manufactured. It means for X also 1,000 units, for Z also 1,000 units. Assume the only relevant overhead item is the cost of engineering change order. They are saying, assume an overhead cost, we have only one cost, and the cost name is overhead engineering change order, like change order cost. This is the only cost in the overhead. That X and Z are expected to require eight and two change orders. So it means this is the first base which we can use. For X, how many orders we have? Eight. And for Z, how many orders we have? Two orders. Then what is that other information he told you? Respectively. Then we have here X and Z are expected to require two and three machine hours. It's another base. Number of orders could also be the base. Machine hours could also be the base res respectively. And that the cost of change order. Cost of our change order. It's the cost of one change order is 600. Understood? If factory applies engineering change order cost on the basis of machine hours, actually, actual base should be number of change order. But they're saying if number of change order is also there, and companies are also deciding to use machine hours also to allocate the overheads. Then the cross subsidy per unit you have to calculate. Per unit you have to calculate arising from the peanut butter costing. Do you remember the idea that I gave you for peanut butter costing? Like you will have two or more bases. You will use those bases to allocate overheads. The difference in the overheads will be your peanut butter costing. So what I'm going to do here, it means we have a two bases. Overhead cost, we can allocate based on a uh, change orders. Change number of change orders. This can be used. Second base is what? Number of machine hours. This can also be the base. And do you remember total? First, I need total change order. Total change order is what? 8 for X plus 2 for Z. It's given. So total change order is what? 2 for Z. Huh? 
Total change order is how much? 10 orders. This is what I need. And for machine hours, do you remember he told you? For product X and Z, how many units we are producing? 1000. Thousand. Each product for X is taking how many hours? Two hours. It will be how many hours? 2000 hours. And for Z, how many hours we are taking? Three hours. We we'll multiply by three hours. It will take you. Give you 3000. Hours. Total hours. Based on hours. It will be total. will be how much? 5000 hours. How much it will be? 5000 hours. Okay. It will be three hours. 3,000. So total will be how much? 5,000. Understood? Now we have to use these things. Please remember here. Okay. Can you look? These things you need to use your mind now. Can you tell me what is the total overhead cost? What is the total overhead cost? Here he told you overhead cost is what six hundred dollar per change order. Six hundred dollar per order is given already. Understood? If I want to know total overhead cost, I will multiply with the total orders. Total number of orders. And total number of orders were how much? H two or ten? I'll multiply with the ten. It means total overhead cost is six thousand dollar. Because per order cost is 600. And total 10 orders are there in total. So 6,000 is total overhead cost. Now I'm going to use number of orders. You will listen me carefully now. First of all, if I'm going to use this base, if I'm going to use this base, which base? Number of change orders. So how I will calculate overhead recovery rate per order? I'll take ordering cost, which is how much? 6,000 total orders are how many orders? 10 orders. This will give you per order cost, how much? 600 per order, which is already given. Per order was given, right or wrong? And now you will allocate to the product. Please listen to me what I'm saying. This is per order cost, right? Now I want to allocate this to the X and Z. Tell me X requires how many orders? I'll multiply with the eight orders. X requires how many orders? This is what X I'm doing first. 600 times eight orders. It means to X it will go $4,800. Understood? I'm allocating in total, right? Then for Z, how many orders we require? Two orders for Z. Two orders. So I'll multiply 600 times two. It will be how much? $1,200. You got it? But we have to calculate per unit. I, how I will get per unit now? I'll divide with the number of units. For each product is 1,000 units. So per unit, can you tell me it will be how much? 4.8 per unit. It will be how much? 1.2 per unit. On the base of orders. To X, how much is the cost is going? Based on orders. This is product X, this is product Z. Based on what orders? Based on orders. X is having how much cost? $4.8 per unit. And Z is having how much? $1.2 per unit. Understood? Now we have another base. Which base? Machine hours. And total machines, 2,000 machines are, are for X and 3,000 machines are for Z. Total is how much? 5,000. I want to calculate over, overhead recovery rate. What I will do? Overhead recovery rate per machine R I want now. I'll take total overhead which is how much? $6,000. Right or wrong? Right by total, total machine R which will be how much? 5,000 R. This will give you per hour cost. How much? 1.2. It is dollar 1.2. Per machine hours. Now I want to allocate this cost to X and Z. This cost to X and tell me X is taking how many hours per unit? Two. Z is taking three. So if this if, if this is the per hour cost, 
I will multiply for the two. It will give you for the X how much? No, this is twelve dollar. No, one point two. One point two times two hours. It will give you how much? Two point four dollar. And for Z, again per hour rate is one point two. Z is taking how many hours? Three hours. It will give you how much? Three point six dollar. Over at the right. Understood. Now I'll bring it here. Is this per unit cost? Where it has gone? Per unit cost for the X and for the Z. Based on order, it was 4.8 and 1.2. But based on machine hours, what it is? 2.4. 3.6 it was. Now see cross subsidization. How much you will take the difference? What is the difference? 4.8 and 2.4. What's the difference? 2.4. Here is the other. What is the difference? This is called cross subsidization effect. Like if you will use different base, so this will be the difference, right? In overhead allocation, 2.4 and 2.4, this will be the answer. Now look at the question requirements. What was the question? The cross subsidy per unit arising from peanut butter costing is what? How much? 4.8, 1.2, 2.4, and 3.6. 2.4 it was per unit. Understood? You got the idea how to deal with the cost subsidization. Simply you need to get per unit cost by using first base, then per unit cost by using second base, and then take the difference. This will be your answer. Understood? Questions are not easy, guys. You have to obviously read it, practice and plus you have to grow now. Huh? You are not in school anymore. So now we have here one more question. It's one more difficult question I'm doing with you. So again, I'm, I'm, I will first request you to read this question. Okay, if you don't know how to solve it, no worry. But I'm explaining this is learning for you, right? Learn. So read this question, guys. Please read from your screen. Guys, we have a question here now. They are saying a company manufactures diamond, e, uh, diamond earrings and what? Pendants. Company uses activity based budgeting or costing, has established diamond inspection as one of its cost pool. Actually, it's the name of overhead inspection. With the number of diamonds used, with the number of diamond used as cost drivers, the number of diamond is the cost driver. Activity is what? Activity is what? Yeah, activity is what? Diamond inspection. Cost driver is what? Number of diamond used. Understood? Then what it is? Then they're saying this is important statement. They're saying inspection supplies. Supplies mean to say it's not mentioned it's a direct or indirect. So let's assume it is indirect material. It's variable cost. Material is which one? Variable cost. Okay. In inspection supplies for each diamond inspected are how much? $0.35. This is actually variable cost for each diamond. And you know variable cost we assume per unit remain constant. You know it, right? I, I taught you in costing. Variable cost per unit remains constant. Okay. For upcoming year, the company originally believed it would produce and sells how many pendants? 10,000 pendants and containing one diamond. It means if there are 10,000 pendants, this is pendants. Each will have one diamond. Total diamonds are required how much? 10,000 diamonds. And then they're telling you 5,000 sets of earrings. So there's a earrings. How many? 5,000 sets. And they're telling you containing two diamonds. Obviously, Multiply by two diamonds. It will also be how many diamonds? 10,000 diamonds. Total diamonds are going to be 20,000 diamonds. Agreed? Because number of diamond is your cost diamond. But read the question. Don't focus what I'm saying only. We have to go through the question also. Then he told you what? Resulting the following inspection cost per Lyca is if you produce 10,000 pendants. 5,000 sets of earring. So then this will be the cost. This is what they are saying. And in the cost, 
you have your first cost salary of inspection it's overhead equipment cost maybe like maintenance cost overheads inspections these two costs are fixed agreed or not yes. but this supplies is what is the variable if you will manufacture 10000 if you will use how many total diamonds 20000 because this cost is given per diamond now this is per diamond okay tell me just calculate because variable cost per unit remains constant i don't need to bother i just need to know what is variable cost per diamond how will i how i will calculate how i will calculate i will take 7000 supply which is variable cost divided by how many diamonds 20000 this will give you 0 0.35 dollar which is already given here Understood? And what we will assume, please focus, we will assume variable cost per diamond or per unit, it's per diamond. Per diamond, it will remain constant 0 0.35, which is already given here. And you can also calculate, given here, plus you can calculate this here also. Understood? Now, even you will manufacture now 10,000 pendants, 5,000 pendants, variable cost will not change. Now let's go through the question. If company now believes, now company believes it will only be able to produce and sell how many pendants? 8,000 pendants. Now, before you were producing 10, now you're thinking 8,000. In addition to the earrings, it means earrings are the same. How many? 5,000. Only pendants I have reduced are reduced from 10 to 8. Then they're telling you. What is the cost per set of per set of earring? In in earring, in, in one set, how many diamonds are there? Two. It means actually it's asking you cost for two diamond. Cost for indirectly, right or wrong? You are understanding. How many earrings you have two? In one set, there are two earrings that you will wear one. Two you will have, obviously. In, in each ring, if it is one diamond, so there are two diamonds. If he's asking you to calculate the cost of one set of earring, means he's asking you indirectly to calculate the cost of two diamonds. So how you will do it now? Let's have a look. I'm doing it here. Variable cost will not change. It will you will take as at 0.35. First, I'm calculating cost per diamond, and at the end I will multiply with the two diamonds. I will get cost for two diamonds. So now variable cost is 0 0.3 is not going to change. Now I have to work only with what? With the fixed cost. Fixed cost is how much over it? Fixed cost is how much? Uh, it's given here. How much total? 63,000. I'm going to deal with this now. So overhead recovery rate I'm going to calculate. For the fixed. So how many is the cost? 63,000. And now you have to divide because overhead recovery rate I need per diamond. So 60,000 is the total cost. How many diamonds I will divide now? Because now you are going to produce 8,000 pendants. It will have one diamond. So 8,000 diamonds. Plus you are going to produce what? 5,000 sets of earring. Each set will have two diamonds. It will be what? 10,000 diamonds. Total diamonds will become 18,000. Agreed? Total will become 18,000 diamonds. I will divide 18,000 diamonds. 63 divided by 18,000, you will get per diamond cost. How much? 3.5 per diamond. Now tell me what you are required to calculate. You are required to calculate cost per set of earring. In earring, how many diamonds are there? Two diamonds are there. Understanding? Two diamonds are there. So what I will do? If variable cost per diamond is 0 0.3, and fixed cost per diamond is 3.5. You just calculated now. So this will give you per diamond cost, right? Total cost per diamond, how much? 3.85. And I want to calculate cost for how many diamonds? Two diamonds. I'll multiply with the two. This will give you how much? 7.70. This is the cost of per set of year ring. Understood? So this will be the answer about 
seven. I know questions are tricky. Three, five. 3.85 multiplied by 2. Understood? Clear? Now, see, maybe you are shocked now. This question is a technical, no problem. Actually, I selected difficult questions from software itself. Not every question will be like that. Okay? Now, see, some, I'm going to show you one more question. This will be more easy. Leave it. Let's do it. Let's do it this question. It's a little bit tricky, but it is interesting. So guys, please go through this question. So we have uh, this question now. For example, Zeta company is preparing its annual profit plan as part of its analysis of the profitability of individual products. The controller estimates the amount of overhead that should be allocated to the individual product lines from the information given in the next column. So we have information. Actually, we have two products. One is called wall mirrors. Second is called what? Specialty windows. We have a, a mirrors and windows. This is what I will use. They tell you unit produced. How many units you are producing? 25. 25 for each. Material moves per product line. For wall mirrors, maybe we moved material five times. For specialty window, we moved material 20 times. Direct labor hours per unit. This is 200, 200 per unit, 200 hours, 200 hours. Budgeted material handling cost. Actually, this is overhead. How much material handling cost is? You can see the throughout the question, only one cost is given. So it means overhead cost, 50,000. Now, what is the question? Under activity-based costing, Zeta's material handling cost allocated to one unit of wall mirror. Understood? So how you will do it now? How you will do it, guys? Easy. So I'm using here, guys, we have only one overheads. Overhead recovery rate, I will calculate per move. The reason, because it's a material handling cost, right? Our material handling cost, cost driver should be but number of material moves. Material cost, material moves. Understood? It should not be labor as extra. So material cost, material moves. So total moves are how much? 20. Because 5 plus 15. Here is the moves actually. Overhead cost is how much? 50,000. Overhead cost is how much? 50,000. Divided by what? Total moves. Total moves are how much? 20,000 or 20 moves. So this will give you per move cost. How much? 2,500 per, per move. Now I want to calculate per unit for only wall mirror. But I can do for both no problem. First I have to, I will take this recovery rate and I will multiply. If I am dealing with the mirror and window. If per move is cost, is 2,500. For mirror, how many moves we need? 5. I'll multiply with the 5. 2,500 times 5, it, it will give you 12,500. For window, how many moves we need? 15. I'll multiply per move times number of moves. It will give you 37,000. For this overhead, you got right. You got it. Then what do you have to do? Then guys, then guys. You have to calculate actually overhead cost to one unit of wall mirror. So this is wall mirror. Overhead cost is almost 12,000. Tell me how many units you are producing for wall mirror. Per unit are 25. It's given here 25, 25 are both. I'll divide the number of units. 25 units. So this will give you 500 per unit is the answer. If it's asking for window, what I will do per unit? I divide this value with the 25. Because for window also we have a 25 units, right? For window also we have a 25 units. I will take window overheads, which is 37,500. Divide by 2,500, it will give you 1,500. But question is about wall. Mirror's so answer should be what? $500 per year. Understood, guys? I hope so it is clear. In next class, we will talk about process costing.
Now we have a question you can ask me, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>